Elkhart, Indiana was founded in 1831 when Dr. Havila Beardsley bought a square mile from a Potawatomi Indian chief. The town lies at the northern tip of the Hoosier State, within shouting distance of Michigan. Actually, make that within a trumpet's call, because Elkhart is where Con Selmer makes musical instruments. Including trumpets played by musical greats like the celebrated Boston Pops Orchestra, jazz legend Louis Saxmo Armstrong, and red-hot retro swing band Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. This is an original blueprint of the company's world-famous Bach Stradivarius trumpet. Designed almost 80 years ago by Vincent Bach, who was, by the way, no relation to Johann Sebastian. Great job. Yes, In-house designer nice. Ted Wagner explains the Stradivarius connection. He called it the Stradivarius because, as in the Stradivarius violin, it was the best of its kind. So he used the word Stradivarius. This is the Stradivarius of the, of the trumpet and cornet. Seeing these gorgeous trumpets being made is almost as rewarding as listening to them being played. Because artists play these instruments, it's fitting that artisans make them. In fact, everybody who works here is a kind of artist in their own way. They take raw materials and create something beautiful and lasting. A box drawn of various trumpet begins its journey to virtuosity as flat sheet metal. Plan manager Mike Call describes what's next. So that press, is it vacuum or is it steam? Hydraulic. So it presses down. Mm -hmm. And it'll form the, form the mold. We have a bladder inside, as I said, that goes to about three to 5,000 pounds with the pressure inside this. And it'll mold the part out. And it does both operations in the front and back. We have another mechanism on the other side that will complete the draw. So can I play it now like this? <laughs> I don't think so. If you'd like, we can try. <laughs> Mike Jackson hammers the seam into submission. That's beautiful, Mikey. You can hardly see the seam here at all. It's almost like you finished it up here. But his work's still not done. Next, he fires the metal. Wow, that's getting red hot. There you go. This process eliminates any residual seam. It's now a completely unified piece. It's like a steamroller. So you have, you have to do, do that, Mike. <laughs> Not yet, huh? Not yet. How many of these do you think you've made over the nine years, Michael? Thousands. Tens of thousands. You ever see them being played anywhere? At football games. Well, what do you think when you see him playing trumpets? Uh, I'd be wondering if I made that trumpet. <laughs> you gotta put a little yeah. oil on it. That's, that's gotta be the exact process that was used 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, making a trumpet. In fact, this is almost exactly how the first modern trumpets were made 500 years ago in Nuremberg, Germany. What's this freezer all about here, Mike? Well, this is the process that we use to bend the bells. I thought you were keeping your snacks in here or something. This is, this is minus 97 degrees? Yes, it stays between 95 and 105 degrees. I'm John. Day. Lonnie Joe Lonnie has the Joe. coolest job Lonnie in the Joe plant. Lonnie does all the bending of the bells for us. We'll step back and he can give us an example of how he does it. The liquid that's pumped in and frozen keeps the trumpet from collapsing when put in the elbow bender. After bending, the liquid will thaw and drain away. What am I doing? No, 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 no. Uh, we we put this in brake fluid. Brake fluid, all right. Okay, and, and then we put, put, put it there. Up. You push back yep. and pull. Got it. All, all in the same motion. Got it. Just co come on around, that's it. That's it, huh? That was pretty cool. Not till 1815 were valves added to the trumpet. They allow the trumpeter to change the pitch of the instrument's natural harmonics. Like the trumpet bell, the valves are also handcrafted. That means shaping, cleaning, polishing, and burnishing. Virgil's job is to give the metal a spit shine. Well, really, it's a rouge shine. See? He puts rouge onto the buffer. 
Beautiful. After a bath, the components are assembled by incredibly skilled hands. Here, the spit valve is attached. Then the pistons are slid into place. At last, the trumpet is ready to face tester Roger Zayer. I don't know the drum part to this. Go ahead. Okay. You ready? Yeah. as a kid but of course when there's a pro on the premises you want to hear what he could do too we've got a special trumpet here for you it's the box stradivarius which is what you were seeing during your tour today and special says here made in america 2004 oh. and, and there's your name john ratzenberger right there let's see if you can still play i don't i don't know if i still have my lip but uh we'll give it a shot <laughs> Thanks, Fred. That was great. That's Fred. Uh, that was great. He's my lip. <laughs> Coming up, a crystal clear marriage. The best way to appreciate the incredible artistry of musicians is to try to play an instrument yourself. That's what I was thinking as I toured the Khan Summer factory. I remembered what the great pianist Arthur Rubinstein once said, that if he didn't practice for a single day, he could hear the difference. If he took off two days, the critics could hear the difference. Three days, the audience could hear the difference. A good illustration of what he meant is what happened when Made in America production assistant Alston Chapman picked up a Khan Selmer trumpet. I did, it's been a while. <laughs> He doesn't get much time to practice when we're on the road. <laughs> For more about the goods that make America great, click on the Travel Channel at discovery.com.